Good evening. Welcome to another episode of Cultivating the Culture. And today we're going to be talking about generational uh, wealth. And we have a guest on here, my son, Tariq Ibn Jamil. All right. And as we start our show all the time, we start with our great leader, Malik Shabazz or Malcolm X, as you know him. And they let him speak and give you this message. off with brother Malcolm with his wise words getting you to be able to think for yourself and as he talked to, about it to these people in uh, 1965 and telling the youth that they need to be able to think, think for themselves and um, I'm honored today to have a youth on the show uh, this is uh, my son his name is Tariq Ibn Jamil I'm in Tariq Ibn Tariq I'm Tariq and, my, and Ibn means son of so um, this is my son he's on the show uh, normally, the past few previous shows we had, we're going over Ice Cube. Uh, we will continue with that next week uh, when we will have uh, three uh, accountants, CPAs, that's going to be on our show. And what we'll be talking about is uh, the financial portion in bank, uh, banks, lending, and the finance uh, issue of the contract with Black America. It's uh, very important, and we wanted to make sure that we had high-quality guests. As last week, uh, where the two weeks we had... Uh, Mohammed Bashir and Mr. Bashir uh, was our legal expert going over the um, uh, um, the uh, 13 the amendments and also police reform and it was definitely 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 beneficial and so we want to make sure you get that quality uh, going over it so uh, for next week for our financial we're going to be going over that aspect because it's important these things that they're talking about and the things that that come about from the type of experts that we have uh, uh, talking about these issues. Um, so next week, please, we definitely want to see you. And if you, you missed the show, um, you can go to our YouTube. We have Cultivating the Culture, and you can go on there and see some of the old shows if you're not a Facebook person. Um, so what we decided is uh, since we, uh, we, we were not putting that show on this week, we decided in the middle of the week to uh, turn into um, generational wealth or generational poverty and generational wealth. And uh, a lot of times I hear the statement generational wealth. People are talking about generational wealth. And for us, uh, generational wealth is different than when you talk about it from a wealthy person. For a poor person, talk about generational wealth, he may be referring to getting some cash and buying some property or something like that. Um, a wealthy person, they think of it in a different way. And um, for myself, uh, you know, I have my 
uh, understand it, generational wealth. We all understand generational poverty, but really we don't understand it because if we did, we wouldn't continue to stay in it. But for me, the, 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 most, the greatest wealth that you can leave your child is belief in the creator, belief in the creator of existence. And as uh, we talked with you before about our show, we have our organization, um, Nation of Iman or Nation of Faith, uh, Umat Ali Man, and um, also we have uh, Jamato Sijin, which is um, under that um, we do uh, prison ministry, um, working in prisons, working with people, and working on faith and belief, and belief in the Creator, the Creator of existence. Um, I don't really use the term God because a lot of people are confused about God. You know, in individuals will call themselves God, and I was asking questions. Well, if you're God, then kill yourself and make yourself come back. None of us has been able to do it yet, and they're not going to attempt to. But people are confused about that term. But the creator of the existence, the creator of life, the creator of death, it's clear there's only one being. Just like uh, tomorrow we're supposed to have the alignments of uh, the planets um, that hasn't happened um, in you know, 800 years. And uh, people are saying, oh, this is supposed to happen, that's supposed to happen. Well, whatever, the creator is the one that actually caused these planets to align because he sets the cause. So because he plant caused that, you know, whatever happens is his kada or his determination. Whether it's the good or bad, and it's going to be good because he has planned it. So we use the best. So one of the things that I try to do with, with my children, or as, as you see, my son is uh, 28 years old. Yes. Yeah. You're going, man. <laughs> so um, what, but with, with them as children, or when they were children, is try to make sure the most important thing is the belief in God. My mother, um, that was the greatest thing that she left with us, or she's still here. Uh, but she enforced is the belief in God. And the belief in God is the thing that brought me um, through so many things. And, um, and one of the things uh, in, in the book, it talks about, um, in, the, in the Quran, it talks about uh, Prophet uh, uh, Jacob, or Yaqub, as we say. And he was on his deathbed. And he called to his sons, and he held a conversation with him. And it is mentioned in the following verses in the Quran. It said, the same did Abraham enjoin on his sons. He also said to Yaqub, O my sons, Allah has chosen for you the true religion. Therefore, die not and uh, save as men who have surrendered or who, uh, who present death to Yaqub when he said to his sons, What will you worship after me? They said, We shall worship your God, God of the fathers, Abraham and Ishaq, and God, and unto him we have surrendered. So, this is uh, the examples as we talk about what I show. The best examples are the, the examples of the righteous men that um, we have in the books of the Quran, of the Torah, of the Injil, uh, um, which uh, the Bible, the, um, the Old Testament, New Testament. These are the great examples that we try to encourage and we believe wholeheartedly in these people and their existence. And so with my son, um, I remember when you were younger, <laughs> I used to drill him, you know, uh, um, about memorizing things. And one of the uh, greatest things, actually, um, tell me, tell him about yourself anyway, before we go into the thing and stuff. You have your, this shirt on. This is, uh, what is it? I am somebody, mm -hmm. I am somebody, no compromise. And there's a brother, uh, Akil Talib, you know, out of California, that's um, doing a, a great effort of uh, trying to, to cultivate the culture. I mean, he's, uh, you know, did music, uh, rapping, and, and um, you know, and so he tries to educate people. Um, he has, I see a strong family, you know, um, constantly doing messages, and I love uh, his shirts. So, you know, please support his effort um, um, because he's doing it on his own. So he has these shirts and other shirts, and you can go on there. It's, it's um, a kill uh, Talib, and so, you know, like I said, it, what we try to do is we try to, you know, support each other, especially when we see people are positive. So going back to it, go on, son, talk about yourself. Well, and, uh, uh, name is Tariq, Tariq Lane. Um, you know, raised in the DMV area, went out to University of Houston uh, for school, majored in supply chain and logistics, stayed out there for 10 years working and trying to develop skills and you know, now uh, time has come for come back home and be in this area and try to, you know, honestly cultivate the culture and try and, you know, spread a positive message and try to make an impact in an area that I feel definitely, definitely needs it. And so now I just have opportunities to, you know, try and spread a great message with my dad and um, try and connect with a lot of the people that have spread 
positive messages along the way with him. And so that opportunity has presented itself and, you know, mashallah, I've been able to take advantage of it. So. I appreciate it. I mean, you know, I know he, um, he went down to Texas and uh, the weather's nice in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, he ran track with him. He ran for the University of Houston. You know, um, had a pretty nice squad down there and stuff. Um, and so been trying to get him back here. Um, well, I, I, he's like you said, you also you had um, uh, construction management. You got you, you also a degree with construction management yeah. and chain, uh, chain, supply chain. Supply, supply chain. I always say it wrong. Supply chain. <laughs> so, I mean, but it's beautiful. I mean, just glad to be able to have you back. And, um, but one of the things is, is like you said, you know, going back to the generational wealth. So wealth is just not cash that, that's passed on. Mm -hmm. The first thing is we're going to talk about um, belief in the creator mm -hmm. and um, then we'll go over, um, then we'll talk about the, what everybody else would expect, you know, things of the property and other issues and stuff about the wealth and what I've tried to do with business wise, passing that on to my son. Okay. So, so um, we'll start off yeah, reading. Uh, I is out of Lukman. Yeah, yeah. So to Lukman, I used to have to memorize it in Arabic and stuff. I mean, his brother was an uh, excellent Arabic uh, speaker. One of the things with Arabic, the hardest, uh, the kha, kha, you know, <laughs> kha is a hard word to, to, to say. And um, um, because, you know, he learned phonetics and stuff. He could say it right, and uh, I remember a brother had joked with me about it. It's like, I need to learn from a son about it. <laughs> now I'm good. <laughs> but at that time, you, you know, when you're young, you can learn these things and stuff. But anyway, um, but the English was the most important thing because the message that Luke Mann had given to his son is something that we can relate to now. So you want to just go over it? Okay. And so, Ayah 12. And indeed, we bestowed upon Luke Mann al-Hikmah wisdom and religious understanding saying give thanks to Allah and whoever gives thanks he gives thanks for the good of his own self and whoever is unthankful then verily Allah is all rich free of all wants worthy of all praise okay and yeah and, and that's that's one of the things you know to be thankful you know and uh, we don't even take the time to really thank our Lord you know we complain so much about what we don't have mm -hmm. you know um, especially like here in our society, I remember we had a contract and um, we did some construction over in Cuba. Mm -hmm. And when I went over to there in the 90s, um, I, we, for us, we were getting, I think the guys were getting like $28 an hour. Mm -hmm. And um, the average Cuban lived off of $28 a month. Mm -hmm. And so when you see how these people were living, they didn't have electricity at night, cut off the electricity, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, they had basic things. And here, when I came back to the, the States, we were, and I went in the supermarket, like, and they, had, they got two, 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 uh, uh, like with cereal, there's just two. two. Product, yeah, That's yeah, it. Two and so when I came back to the United States and I saw a whole row of just <laughs> oh, I, uh, such a selection, <laughs> I realized, you know, how unthankful we are. How we, you know, because we don't, we don't look at, you know, the, the, the other people's conditions. And one of the things is, is, one thing that was beautiful about there is that they're educated, they got free education, mm -hmm. and they got free health. And so, you know, it wasn't just, you know, like Haiti or something, they're conditioned mm -hmm. and they were in poverty and stuff, you know, but they didn't have a lot, but they utilized. They made, they, they kept what they got into, the, mm -hmm. you know, they used what they got to, they got what they needed. <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. But go on. And I mean, you know, it goes, it's, it's no different today, you know. Mm -hmm. You see there was a trend on Twitter where a lot of people were going around saying that, you know, America is a third world country in a Gucci belt. And so it really shows how much we know little about what a third world country is going through. So I don't understand that. You got to explain that. I mean, a third world in a Gucci well, belt. In, like meaning I world. mean, a, a lot of people, you know, will going into the generational poverty, we'll mm -hmm. spend all our money on a Gucci belt just to look like we have it, and then we'll go home and you have nothing. Right. And so essentially people were joking like, ah, when America was going through what it was going through early in the pandemic and, you know, riots and stuff, and people thought it was hard times in America. And so they came, uh, America is a third world country in a Gucci belt. That means we just we just show, we, we look like we have it, but really in America we don't. And so we, that, that really yeah, showed. Yeah, people don't understand, like, I remember when I went to Hodge and, um, you know, I was over, the, what they'll do is after the people make the sacrifice, they take the meat and then they, you know, the remains of it, they throw off. And you've seen a lot of people that were, people there, Africans mm -hmm. and other people were, you know, they would drop it on the floor and they pick up the meat. Mm -hmm. I saw people drinking water, 
That was dirty water, you see? So, you know, what we have here, people are throwing away water. Where other places, they don't even have water. No. So, you know, they we don't realize uh, what we have, even what we have today compared to, you know, what we had when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, what we had when my mother was a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, those type of things. And so, you know, if she had any of the things that I have, <laughs> you know, she would be in, in, in an elevated position mm -hmm. and stuff. And so, you know, in, and likewise and stuff, you mm -hmm. know, what we have and stuff. So, you know, but what happens is they're constantly looking at not reality, mm -hmm. not what's in front of them, these projections of, of other people. And they're making them, you know, believe that, oh, well, you don't have this, so you don't have nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, nah, you have this, you have a computer. You have something that you can get knowledge. You can be able to take things. You can you can learn all day. Mm -hmm. Anyway, your children can learn. Mm -hmm. Your children can be educated. And one of the things that's good right now is that um, yeah, right now is that they're they're um, forcing the people to learn at home. And this is the most amount of participation parents have had <laughs> in the black community, in the poverty community, and stuff. Whatever some of the areas or whatever, even in in the the regular black Everywhere. community. Yeah. yeah. A, with their children in the education. Mm -hmm. And so now it's like, okay, if you can do go online and uh, work with the system, because the system's saying in order for them to get educated, you have to go through this process, then you can also do it individually for yourself. Mm -hmm. I remember um, when I was in college, we had um, a program, it was called African Street School. And what we would do is, um, you know, this is back in the 80s in Boston, um, we would buy books. And that's where that Malcolm X thing, I used to have the Malcolm X book, Malcolm X Speaks to Young Kids. So we get books and we go around to the neighborhoods and talk to people. And in the book, we said, this, you know, said your, your oppressor will never educate you. Therefore, you must have, have to educate yourself. Mm -hmm. And say, when you finish with this book, pass it on. And so that's what I would do. You know, and the same. So now here it is, is you have the tools to be educated, but, you know, people are not utilizing that and stuff. So it's being thankful, you know, to your Lord and stuff. I mean, that you have life. Do you have family? So, okay, what's the next thing? And remember, when Lukman said to his son, when he was advising him, O oh my son, join not in worship others with Allah. Verily, joining others in worship with Allah is a great wrong indeed. And we have enjoined on man to be dutiful and good to his parents. Okay. Well, before we go on, because worship, and see, one of the, one of the biggest things, that, you know, see, we have an audience that's open, you know, for, for everybody, Muslims, Christians. And, you know, uh, so in this culture, we want to try to educate people, going back to God, mm -hmm. you know. Um, if No, no, what you said with Allah. He said, uh, join not pers partners w with Allah. Mm -hmm. And what I went back to, I say the, cr the creator, the creator of existence and stuff. That's what we're talking about. If during that time when the, the Quran was being revealed, they were dealing with the Christians, they were dealing with the Jews. Mm -hmm. And there was no confusion about who Allah was, mm -hmm. because that's the word they said of God. It's like, if I'm talking about God, you know, in English, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have a problem. Yeah. But today, there's confusion because of the, the people don't understand the language. But if you were to actually go to Jerusalem, mm -hmm. you actually go to the Arabic-speaking places, the Christians say Allah, the Jews say Allah. That's their word for God. Mm, yes. And so, so many times people are confused. Oh, you worship Allah. Like, no. We worship the creator of existence. Do you worship the creator of existence? Yes. And so, you know, um, I try to be clear. Mm -hmm. So, no, you should not to join any other worship. You're not supposed to worship the prophets, the creations, or anything like that, except for the creator the of existence. So. And we have enjoined on man to be dutiful and good to his parents. His mother bore him in weakness and hardship upon weakness and hardship. And his waning is in two years, give thanks to me and to your parents. Unto me is the final destination. You might have to read that one again, man. Let me hear that. <laughs> no, nah, I'm joking with you. I'm joking oh, with you. Okay. <laughs> now you're pretty good. Praise God. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. And that's important and stuff. You know, <laughs> I remember in the Quran where Allah says, um, do not even say ugh, you know, like to your parents and stuff. And, you know, I mean, when you talk about that, when you read that part about the weaning again. His mother bore him in weakness and hardship upon weakness and hardship. And his weaning is in two years. Give thanks to me and to your parents. Yeah. So your parents, this, all of this work that they got to do, you can't think, you can't move, you can't do nothing. You just got to be dependent on them. And a lot of times here it is being ungrateful again mm -hmm. and stuff, you know, to that situation. Because they took the time out. They changed their diapers. They got up in the morning. They mm -hmm. sacrificed and all of that and stuff for you. And then it's like, well, what have you done for me? Like, what do you mean? You know? Yeah. Hey. You know, I, I've, um, I saw something funny, and then it made me like, okay, slow down. And, um, 
you guys when you ask to get things fixed uh, electronically, mm -hmm. you know, it, it can become very frustrating. But then I read a quote, like, your mom and your dad taught you how to walk for two right. years. And oh, so yeah. at least you can do is help them fix their oh, phone. Yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> so I said, yeah. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's <laughs> my favorite thing. Actually, before the show, I had to <laughs> do something. I give it to him. I'm like, yo, you know, fix that and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, man. I mean, you know, um, I remember we had got the, the, the one of those bouncy things and stuff. I was so glad, you know, I mean, and I was glad you learned to walk, but I wasn't because, you know, when the kids turn two years old, Explore. oh, my God, <laughs> they're going in everything and stuff. But, you know, alhamdulillah, so go ahead. But if they both strive with you to make you join in worship with me, others that of which you have no knowledge, then obey them not, but behave with them in the world kindly and follow the path of him who turns to me in repentance and in obedience. Then to me will be your return, and I shall tell you what you used to do. And see, that's one of the things is a lot of times in our society, you know, there's a statement there to say, well, why do you worship this? Like, I found my fathers upon it. You see, I found my father upon it. And they still mm -hmm. say, most of the time, well, my mother, my mother, you know, I found my fathers, came in, my mother and father, was practicing Islam and then my mother went to Christianity she went back and stuff whatever you know and so you know um, but the thing is is hers was a strong belief in the creator but I but I stuck to the guidance that you know from my father because I looked at it and, and I evaluated it and stuff you know but um, so many of us we just live our lives with what we found our, our fathers upon instead of you know looking upon that and stuff so if, if they're guiding you to something that's you know not not after you do your investigation, as time goes on, you have to you have to you know look into it and stuff. So right, that's what he's saying. Yeah. Let me just show. Oh my son, if it be anything equal to the weight of a grain of a mustard seed, and though it will be in a rock or in the heavens or in the earth, Allah will bring it forth. Verily, Allah is subtle in bringing out that grain and well aware of its place. And how many times that happens and stuff, you know. We talk about that and stuff, those type of situations. I mean, that's why I love those that advice, you know what I'm saying, and, and you know, carrying you through life, like you said. I mean, a lot of times, you know, um, we try to hide, you know, from things or we think that, you know, I can put something under the rug and stuff. But we have to remember that the creator of existence is a khabira wa basira. He's the, the, the watcher and the seer. He sees and watches everything that you do. So, you know, um, just like when you talk about, the, them purchasing something, a Gucci belt and stuff for everybody else, but you're living for everybody else. And that was one of the things that I should try to strive with you guys and you and your sisters, you know, as far as, um, remember I always talk about whenever you do an action, try and don't think about what somebody else thinks. Oh, I'm going to do this and they're going to think this. I'm going to wear this. I'm going to think that. Mm -hmm. Because then you're going to worry about somebody else. You should do it only, you know, thinking about yourself, but of course thinking about the creator and stuff, mm -hmm. but not put somebody else's thought of what they're going to think in your head. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, people are living for others and stuff. Yes. You know, so, go on. And turn not your face away from men with pride, nor walk in insolence through the earth. Verily, Allah likes not each arrogant boaster. And say, yeah, and which is opposite what they, and that's why, like I said, I love that advice because it's opposite what they teach you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, here we're talking about the culture, and where, you know, I remember with the rap game when it started this this battle and thing. And, you know, you sometimes you say, I'm this, I'm that, but like, you know, Kara said, I'm this, I'm that, but you just wick, wick, whack. You know what I'm saying? And so that's how it is with the, the today, you, and now it's, it's, I'm gonna put you down, I'm gonna, I'm this. Mm -hmm. And Allah, even in the Quran, talks about in um, the the poets, and He said, "Shall I tell you who the shaitan descend upon?" And He says, "Every lying sinful one, the poets, those mm -hmm. who you know they say they they go from valley to valley. They so have a the following, and they say God. things that they do not do. Mm -hmm. You see, and so you know this arrogance. This is this is um, uh, 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 something that they push forward in our society, and so many people they go out there, but you know they get strung out. So that's beautiful." And be moderate or show no insolence in your walking and lower your voice. Verily, the harshest of all voices is the voice braying of the ass. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I used to, even with the brothers in the prison, I was, when we go over that, and I say, here it is. That's how you see, like you said, the donkey. The donkey just makes that loud song. You know, I mean, and you can you can tell it anyway, and that's how... They, this is this this is what they're pushing. This is the culture. This is and that's why we're talking about cultivating the culture, bringing it back 
to God, bringing it back to 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 to, to a right guidance, mm -hmm. you know, bring it back to some type of standard. But if we look at our standard, what they're sending us today, you know, they get you to act arrogant and look at these guys as leading and, you know, making a lot of noise. You see the people that get on the bus and they're just making all the noise and stuff. So that's how they get their attention, mm -hmm. you know, talking all loud and stuff. You hear the conversation and it's like, no, you know, this this is a, this. This is, a, a, like I said, there's something beautiful to memorize in Arabic, you know. But like I said, with my children, I try to emphasize is that, you know, um, whatever they learn in Arabic, they learn in English because the point of the revelation was to be able to guide the people, and that's what it did. It guided the people, the best generations, you know, during that time. So is that... See you not, O men, that Allah has subjected for you whatsoever is in the heavens and whatsoever is in the earth, and has completed and perfected his graces upon you both apparent and hidden knowledge wisdom guidance for doing righteous deeds and also the pleasures and delights of the hereafter in paradise yet of mankind is he who disputes about a law without knowledge or guidance of a book giving light wow and how many times how many times have you had to deal with people and they arguing with you you know mm. and they don't know and, you know, most of the time, people, they just hear something and then they're, they're arguing and stuff, you know. And so, and that's, that's the best thing. So, that's the wealth. That's the wealth. That's the greatest wealth um, uh, for my children that, that I feel is, is passing on belief. And in order for them to give, the, I have to be able to believe, you know. Um, the thing is, like, our, my our statement all the time is, well, I have to believe in anything. You know, it, it makes no sense. A lot of times, you know, We'll half believe in the book. Oh, I believe in that. I don't believe in this. Okay, well, then what's the sense of even saying you're associated with it? Because you're not going to get the full effect. You know, it's like, you know, uh, uh, following a, a, a manual, a program manual, and I'm going to do part of the program, but I'm not going to do the other. Do you expect to get the results? Do you expect? No. You actually have to follow all the procedures. So if you're going to do that with something created by man, I wrote this program for this to be able to do that in order for that to be able to function. The creative existence wrote uh, something for you to function, and you're going to say, well, I'm going to believe in this, but I'm going to leave that alone. Mm -hmm. you know. And when you say you're going to leave that alone, it's disbelief because he starts out, there's no doubt in this book. Mm -hmm. So you can't leave none of it alone. And stuff. So you know, once you have that basis, then we can start talking about the other types of wealth and stuff. And that's what we're doing. But what we want to do on this show is open up um, the lines. It's uh, 301 429 Nine two four seven. That's three zero one four two nine nine two four seven. That's line one. And if that's busy, you have three zero one three zero six um, seven two eight four. That's three zero one three zero six seven two eight four. We're encouraging people to call in because today's a uh, little relax day. Like I said, enjoying it with uh, with my son. So, um, so like I said, so you know, right now he's back working with uh, uh, when we talk about generational wealth passing on the knowledge, you know. Now, passing on the knowledge of belief in God. But now, the knowledge of business. And that's what we're uh, trying to do and stuff. Um, um, I've been working with him and stuff. So, talk about what we've been doing. Well, I mean, we've just been uh, trying to establish our business and uh, get it fully off the ground. We established it back in 2017 and just trying to accumulate uh, rapport. And so, at this point now, we have built a clientele that where, you know, we can go into 21 and try to be as successful as possible. Uh, try to align ourselves with the right people and the right causes. You know, mostly I, I believe in, I believe in honestly trying to be successful, but only be successful by bringing the community and development with us. Mm -hmm. You know, I, we, we have a vision for what we want, and I believe that uh, vision is only completed if everyone else, uh, the floor has been brought up. And so, I mean, I believe we're on a path to do that, and, you know, if you have that vision, then it will come to fruition if you, like you said, if you fully believe, not half believe. Right, and that's it. And so, you know, basically, like you said, um, I've been in the industry um, for you know, uh, construction industry, basically, um, since, uh, what is it, 30 80, years. yeah, 30 years. I started in 84, oh, you know, after, I mean, I did technology, worked as a biomedical technician, and then when I got out that, I got instruction really full-heartedly um, whole in uh, 91, mm -hmm. you know, 
um, and uh, um, have a lot of connections and all that and stuff. And so part of my wealth is the connections. And that's what we've been doing and stuff. Because, you know, he was doing his work in uh, Texas. And like I've told him is like a lot of times, you know, doing business, you know, our people are always, I want to do it on my own. I want to, you know, I, I got it and stuff, whatever. That's you and that's your, your situation. But like I told him, you know, I've always that why start from ground zero or under that when, you know, you can stand on my shoulders. And, you know, um, I have a strong reputation in this area. Um, know a lot of people and basically, you know, passing on that type of wealth, you know, with the reputation, introducing them to the, to the people, having them be able to work with the people. And one of the things is, is so we set up the business, but what I'm doing is I'm uh, like operations and dealing with uh, the, 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 the employees to be able to make sure that, you know, like you said, it's, it's a lot of times what happens with us in business is that you will have, you will have an idea, mm -hmm. you will have a vision, mm -hmm. you, you, people will tell you that they have that, that they're with you mm -hmm. and they'll start giving you back or they'll mess up your company, mm -hmm. or you come on the job site, and then you lose business. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm making sure that I deal with the people in that in operations. You know, with 30 years of experience, I know how to be able to shut things down, um, how to be able to, to be stern when I need to be stern and stuff, mm -hmm. you know. And that's the important thing because, you know, we don't, especially African Americans, we don't get a lot of second chances, mm -hmm. you know. And that's why, as you see, I, I stress that point about, you know, appearance, on a business, you know, um, going overboard uh, with your performance and stuff, you know, not, you know, not, not even making, you know, mistakes and stuff, you know. And like I said, uh, people, they'll put you in some positions and stuff, you know. Absolutely. I don't know. Remember, I was uh, working in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. and um, we had a project in Philadelphia, and um, we ended up losing, the company lost $1.1 million. So the contract was, they took the job for like $800,000, I was uh, this building called the Meridian Building, mm -hmm. and um, it had caught on fire in the 90s. And no, yeah, yeah, I think in the 90s, yeah, caught on fire. And so they had it, so they took it down to the ground. It's like 38 stories, I think, or yeah, 38 stories. And so we took the job, uh, we were taking out the contaminated ductwork, but they never got a chance to see the other levels, so they went for a low price. These guys got them to come in, and they didn't find out later on the second price was $2.2 .2 million. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I learned at an early age. I, I, they, they brought me from D.C. to Philadelphia to uh, manage the project. Um, and humbly, we had a lot of brothers there. We had uh, like 15 to, to 18 brothers. We actually we had Juma on the job. And, um, and that's, um, um, but I learned how you got to do due diligence. You got to, you know, so we lost money because of the estimating. We lost money because of um, workers. We lost money because of you know the the press of tactics of uh, the contractors mm -hmm. in that area the and yeah and so um it really forced me to stand up and deal with you know these people it's mostly italians that ran it um in that area and stuff the gcs gcs can hurt you mm -hmm. you know and so you know so basically that's when we talk about generational wealth it's the experience that i have you know the experience that i have and then trying to pass that on so uh you don't go through those mistakes and stuff, whatever, or you don't have to, or nobody, you know, puts you in position yes. and stuff. So, um, a, you know, generational poverty, you know, it's funny, like, um, when we look at, I look at my mother and my father, mm -hmm. you know, the situation, and my, you know, my, my mother's side is so-called working class or whatever and stuff, you know, family, and my father's side was the, you know, the, Upper side, but if you see how life, you know, with mm -hmm. daddy's situation, yes. father died in jail, unfortunately, and stuff, you know. Um, and I learned the things about uh, passing things on, the education, because my father's side, everybody's educated. You know, my father had, you know, 1480 on SAT, and, you know, everybody, I got judges and this names and all of these other things and stuff. So that's the thing about the generational wealth, and you see their condition. But that generational wealth, can it's not it doesn't become generational wealth if you're not passing it on to the next generation. Mm -hmm. You see, um, just giving somebody cash, like for example, DC. DC. Um, when I first came to DC, I loved it, and I saw you know our people had houses and all that. But the reason why most of these houses are gone, well, we talk about the regeneration and all that. Harlem is a different thing from DC. Mm -hmm. DC, they owned it. They own so the houses. 
But the reason why they lost it is because the people didn't, with that leaving that asset to them, they didn't give them the knowledge about paying property taxes. You know, mm -hmm. so property taxes every year you have to pay your property taxes. Most of these homes um, in D.C. were lost on property taxes. You got homes that right now are worth nine hundred thousand dollars, but somebody bought it for five thousand dollars. Somebody even if you bought it for forty thousand dollars on taxes, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what they did. They went. You know, you have that date. If you don't pay it by the date, usually by the January, by June, they're on the market. And then after, once once somebody else uh, 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 um, buys it or whatever, they put the money down, then they put all these fees and the people can't get it back. And if you don't teach your child how to be able to, you know, uh, the, about paying taxes, that you don't wait to the, to the tax time comes, you have to be able to pay it monthly or you have to do that and stuff. So a lot of people will leave... Um, they leave property, but, you know, they don't teach them things about wealth and stuff. So I know you was uh, looking at that book. Um, what is it? Uh, the Framework? Of Understanding uh, what, generation, uh, Poverty. Yeah, Understanding framework, Poverty. Understanding stuff. Poverty. So what did you get out of that? Well, I'm, you know, the first things it talks about is that uh, generational poverty is passed down by at minimum two two generations. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a continuous thing. The main thing is that it is a mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, you if if anything, like you say, faith. Faith is faith is a mindset. Right. And uh, if you pass that along, then you have passed on something that can continue. Right. And so it's the same thing with generational poverty versus wealth. You're passing along a mindset to keep someone within this framework that they've been in, or in order to change that framework. And so I believe it, I mean, it just talks about how it starts from there and within alone, I mean, without even having the financial means to break out of that, 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 that uh, repetitious, you know, lifestyle, you have to have the mindset and the belief that you are already out of that. Mm. So then you will start moving towards you know, doing different things and living a different lifestyle, which in turn will, you know, bring bring different circumstances to you because you are no longer involved in those same cycles that have put you, your parents, and your parents' parents in that kind of, you know, generational poverty. Yeah, because that's, that's, that's what I saw. They was talking about how um, if, if you were one generation, the reason why they're in the situation is the majority of times the way they thought about things. Mm -hmm. I remember, you know, so wonder why, you know, we'll be in a situation and we don't have any money or we get, somebody gets evicted or something of the sort. And we blame it on the system and everything. <laughs> and, stuff. and then as it got older, it started saying, oh, okay, because you're not paying your rent. <laughs> you know, you take that money and did something else mm -hmm. and stuff. And so these are habits, yes. you know, um, that, that, that keep you in that because you have people that are ill advising you, yes. you know, and um, people that so, know no better. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they think. Well, I've I literally had people say, "Well, you know, I'm like, why don't you save your money? Like, well, what am I gonna do with it and stuff? <laughs> what you mean, save it, man? Mm -hmm. You know, put it up, die something and stuff." Mm -hmm. And you know, I remember in uh, junior high school, um, living in the Bronx, and I went to the school, and um, there's this this uh, Askenazi or European Jew, uh, Jewish kid that was my friend, and you know, he had some. Um, Raggedy jeans, you know what I'm saying, and stuff, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I saw then I'm where he lived, and I was like, man, you got money with you just like that? It's like, what am I going to do? Waste my money on clothes and stuff? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I buy electronics, you know, things that I need and mm -hmm. stuff. And I was like, wow. And just that statement, just walking with him, listening to that, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, that. Yeah, that's what we do, because I had on, you know, the, I, the Adidas. <laughs> Spent the money on and stuff, impressed. whatever. Even, But I went back to my poor little... You know, place in the bronze and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and and that's that's what happens. We're looking for that glory, you know, right <clears throat> now to or to impress people, you know, and and, and 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 not you know moving forward to get out that mindset. Yes, like you said, this you know continuous, you know, generational, and so we have to we have to change that. I mean, one of the things with the advertising, with the with the rapping and stuff, mm -hmm. with the MCs, you know, the stuff that they put on TV, mm -hmm. you know, constantly. I mean, been being bombarded. And, um, you know, with misguidance, mm -hmm. you know, so, I mean, yours, your generation, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, our uh, gener rap is, I, w I believe it's at its worst, in a sense. Mm -hmm. 
you know, it's just a, um, a consistent amount of glorifying a certain lifestyle. And I, I, you know, you go back to your time and you go back to even 10, 15 years ago where you had 50 Cent. And so you still had gangster rap being as prominent as it is. But now it's, uh, the lifestyle is not just defended, it's pushed. Mm. It's preferred. It's seen as, no, this is what's right, you know. And if you say anything about it, then you're demonizing this. And it's not that it's being demonized, it's that um, you like can acknowledge. You huh? I can explain that when you say, if you say something, you're demonizing it. If you, I mean, because it's demonizing itself, what they're saying is demonizing yeah. the body <laughs> stuff, man. But I mean, <laughs> you know, you say, if you say in any way that, you know, you understand, you know, what someone has gone through and mm -hmm. you understand that that is life, but at the same time, that person doesn't enjoy that life. They yeah. did everything they could to get out of that life, so why tell other people to enjoy that life right. and stay? Right, and, and that's that's the whole thing. Growing up in that type of neighborhood, you don't want to stay up in there. No. You know, nobody, I mean, you're not proud of our, about even the things that you do. Even most of the people that back in the day, they wasn't hustling, you know, just to be hustling and stuff. You know, people was hustling to get out of their situation mm -hmm. and stuff. And when people talk about poverty, you know, growing up in New York, how things was and, you know, not having stuff and, and, and really rough, you know, and glorify that, you know, I mean, that's, it's crazy. But, but the thing is, is, you know, it's, it's commercialized and stuff and they're pushing that type of program to me to increase the amount of people in the prisons, you know, that's mm -hmm. it. It's an advertisement. It's advertisements for the prisons. Mm -hmm. That's the, you don't see no commercials for the private prisons, you know, but that's what that is. That's what that is. Cause it makes no sense. And the, and the craziest thing is that the radio stations are, are the ones that's, you know, playing that type of stuff mm -hmm. and pushing that type of stuff in our, our community. And so, you know, and they'll show uh, certain individuals as, you know, wealth or they're making money. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know? and you you hear that a lot. I've come across a lot of people, a lot of people in positions, and you'll tell them, like, hey, that thing that they're pushing is not good. And they'll come back to you, well, they're making money. And it's like, is yeah. that the and I always say, end yeah. all? I say a prostitute makes money. You can sell, you can sell yourself. Yeah, mm -hmm. they get paid. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the pimp may take the money. Mm -hmm. You know, but well, so does that mean that, that that's it? And th this is uh, this is you know what they reduce people, and really are they? Mm -hmm. You know, and if they are, so what? You know, so uh, like I used to always talk about. You know, when we oh we have uh, somebody online. Somebody online one. Okay. Hello, how are you? I'm good. Um, That's good. Hi, Zay. I have a question. Yes, what's your question, sir? So, are you saying that the fundamental principle for general, generational, wealth, generational wealth is faith and belief in God and should um, we look out for the and should and should we look at the scripture for financial advice? No, see, the thing is, is this. Um, one thing is, is, you know, what, is, what to me, I have to go on what I'm saying. This, you know, my program. <laughs> I have to push out what I, uh, what I believe in. And um, I, the, the life of this world is temporary. You're going to die, right? When you die, if you have a billion dollars, when you die, that money doesn't go with you. It doesn't benefit you. It doesn't save it. It may make you have a nice co uh, coffin, but you're dead. So you don't recognize that. You don't know about it. You can't. It can't do anything for you. So a lot of times we focus on that so-called wealth, but the, what they're calling the wealth that actually dollar, the wealth or that dollar, mm -hmm. and they're pushing that as though that is wealth. So let me clarify. And um, no, the real wealth. Is what's going to get you something in the next life. You see, for a disbeliever, hey, it's over Dover. But, you know, we all die. And when we die and we're taking the last breath, them same people that's denying it are going to be the ones that's calling on God. But then it's going to be too late. And all of that money that you have, you can't do anything. You can't buy extra breath. You can't buy extra time. You see? So, you know, when I'm talking about that type of wealth, because I'll, I'll show 
if you want to know about generational wealth, you can Google it and you can get the regular ones and they'll tell you, you can buy this land. Here it is, this type of property, and we can get it in five properties and these type of investments and, you know, your kids get this education and they're going to give you that. This show is not for that. This show is to be, give you the real wealth. The real wealth is something that's going to be able to be there for the next life. And for me, I want to be able to have something that when I die, I know I'm going to die. Guaranteed I'm going to die. But I believe that my death, uh, it, it doesn't stop. So the wealth for me is what is going to be there for, for that continuous time. If I live to 100 years, okay, I could have all the wealth. But then when I die, it stops. Well, eternity is forever. So my generational wealth is the real wealth that I'm talking about. So not just cash. But while I'm here living, I pass it on as far as business-wise. Pass on my, my connections. Pass on the education. Pass on a, a proper direction. You know, so, I mean, what do you have to say well, to the call about um, that? In regards to using the scriptures for uh, a framework, it, I don't believe you use it as a framework to gain financial wealth. You use it um, as a framework to structure your mind and to live properly. And if you live within, you know, none of us are perfect, and none of us, I mean, none, and, you know, I yeah, try. Yeah, I'm about shit, I'm going to I'm a human yeah. being just like you. Yeah, and so <laughs> if you live within what the scriptures do tell you to live within, then you, um, you do not fall into as many, you don't fall into as many pitfalls that the world uh, offers you or the world opens up for you. And so then you are able to focus and you're able to uh, uh, gain that generational wealth that you're looking after. All right, I'll looking give you another call. Hello. Hey, um, Hello. Hey, um, How are you? Hey, um, Lydia. I'm good. Hi, welcome to our show. Yes, hi, I'm Tracy. And I wanted to know how does faith help more than just that um, more than just you, like how does it help your offspring and other generations? My offspring, here he is. Okay. Um, what faith helps us in knowing that this isn't it? And so there's a lot of, even, even I mean, especially now, you know, because of social media and because of, you know, specific, specifically social media. You have a lot of lost and people who feel as low and that if they do not receive this acceptance from what they see on the phone, then it's that's it. There's nothing else to be proud of. There's nothing else to work towards. You have no existence. Your existence is meaningless. And faith always keeps that little light burning in you in the sense that you can never get too low. And because you know that no one else on this planet can like me, but there is something and there's a being that cares about me enough to create me and that is waiting for me on the other side and that they want more for me while I'm here, not to just please anyone else around me. And I think that is honestly the most important thing to me about faith. It's keeping that, that little light to say that this isn't it and that what I see here and what happens to me here is not the be-all, end-all. Yeah, because, I mean, for example, if this is it, then, you know, um, what's his name? Mark Zuckerberg is, is, is a god, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. he has Zuckerman? Zuckerberg. No, Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg, yeah. He has two, he has two billion followers. He, he changes your mind. The other guy from Google, they can control the way that you think. They can make you be happy or not, you know, you're, they run you. Yeah. So you might as well say that you're, you're God. So, I mean, no, um, uh, man is limited and stuff. So, I mean, through faith, 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 God is out of slavery. <laughs> Belief in God. And this is the thing, like I Absolutely. say, it's constant for us to return back to, Absolutely. you know, because we have rules and regulations. Here it is. Let's go on these 30 years or 40 years of no rules and regulations. I remember they came up this rap. Just do what you like. Say what you like. You know, just say anything and stuff. And so this is the attitude that we have. So saying anything, doing everything, anything, what has that got us? Mm -hmm. This has got us, you know, our people astray. It's filled up the prisons. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's constantly misguidance, you know, and the people are listening to this misguidance. And like I said, even in the prisons, 
when the people start focusing on the faith, they start following a rule book. Mm -hmm. And that's how it is. One of the things is our creator has sent messengers. Our creator has sent examples mm -hmm. for us to be able to follow. So I tell the people, you're a Christian, follow the example of Jesus. Live like he did. Mm -hmm. If you live like he did, you're going to come back up in this prison? Mm -hmm. Nah, you won't. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you're not going to be getting high. You're not going to be having sex. You're not going to exactly. be doing these things. You're not going to be robbing from nobody. You're not gonna... So all of, them, all of them charges that you got, you won't be able to do. Mm -hmm. So we know that if you follow that example of Jesus, right, how he lived, you won't. You follow the example of Moses. You follow the example of Muhammad. Hold up. Call. Hello, how are you? Um, hi, I was just calling because I do agree with what you're saying is that the generational wealth, because it has to be a spiritual wealth, but they're all also in scripture, and I know in the Quran, and I know in the Bible, where like Proverbs 13, 11, it says, dishonest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. Mm -hmm. Or Proverbs, whoever oppresses the poor for his own increase, and whoever gives to the rich both come to poverty. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's another one, and I know as far as with Islam, when you lend somebody money, you're not supposed to have interest. So there are certain principles. So I think it is, like you said, important, because we focus, we've taken God out of money finances, mm -hmm. that we have to prove that God is the creator and gives us our wealth. Mm -hmm. And so... In all his scriptures, I believe in the in the Quran and in the Bible and in the Torah, there are certain principles that we are to abide by to create that wealth. Yeah, well, I mean, Absolutely. you look at Suleiman. Look at the wealth that he had, you know. Um, you look at Suleiman, you look at the wealth that he had and stuff. So, you know, no, I mean, um, when we're talking about it, the first basis of it is belief. And then, of course, with that, you can go after it because you have to be able to to, 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 to make money, like I said, right? going back to me raising my son and teaching right. him and my children uh, about business and how to be able to be successful, how to be the best at it, how, how to be able to you know, pass on that structure and work with other people in the system, in, in, um, in the industry. So when I'm saying the faith-wise, the faith is the basis of it for me. So, you know, for those that... You know, for the generation, like I say, if we look at our, our people of the past, we look at the achievements that we did, you know, back um, in the, the, the you know, uh, actually in the 60s and the 50s and during slavery and after that and stuff, it was, you know, even when we didn't have the economics, we had belief, we had skills, and we worked together. And with that, we were wealthy people. When slavery ended, we didn't have finance, we didn't have money, but we had all the skills. And one of the, the major things, part of the, the wealth is, is knowledge and resources. Mm -hmm. Or even like my sister, you know, she has um, black, red, white, and, and blue. And in there, you go there, she has all these resources that you can mm -hmm. go to. Because one of the things is, is um, I, when, when going to the prison or going to the people, a person, they, they just talk about what they know. So here it is, you present resources. And that resource is a wealth of knowledge that can turn into financial wealth. Mm -hmm. You know, here's the direction. You can take advantage of this program. So here it is. I'm wondering, you know, what could I do? I can't get out of this, this situation. I can't get a job. And I come to you and I say, no, actually, they have this job training program. You can go there. I just made you wealthy. Yes. I just gave you wealth. Mm -hmm. And then now you pass it on to the next generation. Mm -hmm. But in order for you to pass it on to the generation, you have to, you know, work with that and build over time. So, you know, the emphasize, I, I know that we titled it Wealth um, and Poverty and uh, Generational Wealth. But um, I put a little twist to it, you know, not like I said, your normal thing, because you can get the shows all day and they'll tell you and, you know, call us and we can be able to get you generational wealth. You know, the best investment, give me $400 and you find four people and they'll give you $400 and so on, so on, so on. We're not doing that today. We're gone. I mean, um, no, I mean, you know, I would like to lastly say, you know, before you, you said you learn the skill and then you pass it on to the next generation, but you we, we know that community is necessary uh, for even you as an individual. And so before you pass it on to the next generation, you pass it on to someone next to you, and you right. pass it on to you know everyone else around you in close proximity to you, and then it makes it easier. Right. And you see how, you know, it's something, you know, my dad and his friends have talked about in the sense where, you know, you have a child and my child marries your daughter, 
And as long as, you know, make sure your daughter is successful, my son is successful, and you continue it like that. But when you have that type of community, then you're able to, uh, uh, generational wealth is much easier to build when you have help and you have people that are moving in the same direction as you. Right. And that's the whole thing, because I've put a lot of money in people's pockets, and a lot of people put a lot of money in pocket, but not put cash in by even a situation of opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, some uh, somebody says they need a plumber. Okay, yeah, I have a master plumber for you. Mm -hmm. Somebody says they need an electrician. Okay, I got a master electrician for mm -hmm. you. Somebody says they need a CPA. I got several CPAs. Somebody says they need lawyers. So these are the resources, and the resources I have is, is wealth. So I'm not leaving my kids a whole bunch of cash, but because I have wealth, meaning I have a, a wealth of knowledge, wealth of relationships, wealth of, of business opportunity, and the willingness, willingness to be able to share. And my belief in the creator makes me realize that me passing on an opportunity to somebody else, or, or as we call sadaqa, some type of charity or some type of assistance, doesn't reduce my wealth. No. You see, our creator says that yeah, if you give $10,000, it's not going to reduce what you have. It actually increases, especially if you have good intent. So... You know, this is the type of wealth building that we're talking about. You know, like I said, you got the other shows that they're set for that, and mine is um, focusing on it. But anyway, um, we're pretty much near the end of the show. We have a few minutes left. Um, we opened up the lines. Um, we got a couple callers in. But, like, next week we have some financial We have some financial uh, people coming in. I have uh, uh, three CPAs, one that has his own firm, and uh, a certified public accountant for those that don't know. Uh, he has his own firm, and um, you know uh, he's in another one that that works for a, a major company, a corporation. So you'll get that expertise, and then another one that uh, deals with grants and stuff. So, and what we're gonna go back to uh, continue with our regular program as far as going over Ice Cube's uh, contract with Black America, and um, focusing on uh, uh, talking about you know, the finance uh, portion of it. And they're going to be able to put forward uh, certain things. And actually, they're going to tell you some things to be able to help you build wealth and um, 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 help you uh, uh, really be able to, you know, get your things in order. Because one of the things to build it, we have to have a different way of thinking. We have to be able to learn about finance. We have to learn about savings. We have to learn about banking. We have to learn about these things. And we have to look at the wealthy and see how they have set up their system and their structure, you know. Uh, to be able to, to develop that. So next week, um, they'll be on on uh, Sunday at 8 o'clock, and uh, we'll continue with the, the last parts. Um, uh, we'll have two more parts uh, going over the contact with um, Black America. But like I said, just today, I was uh, happy to have uh, my, my son on the show. You know, And uh, like I said, uh, with the brother, uh, you know, Akil Talib, you know, they, they're doing a lot in uh, uh, California. Um, and pushing that and, and I am somebody no compromise and that's important that's what we have to do we have our shirts and we're uh, trying to put out uh, good good ideas I don't know if you saw um, we have as true Dean if you wanted to be able to make some purchase uh, for Jamato Sijin our shirts or Umatali Man you know and what um, does Jamato Sijin stand for? Jamato is the Jamato of the prison uh -huh. and so there's a statement that the Prophet peace and best be upon him said he said the life of this world he said a, a Sijin a, a dunya sizin al muhmin wa janata al kafa. A dunya sizin a muhmin, the life of this world is a prison to the believer, uh -huh. but uh, a jinnah to those that, that don't believe. And so, you know, um, when we go to the guys in the prison, we wear the shirt as a reminder, and we have the statement on the back to, to remind them that when you're in prison, if you're practicing this religion, you're practicing faith, and you're doing good, but when you go back out in the street, and then all of a sudden you fall apart, you're acting like that's your heaven. You're acting like that you left, you know, uh, the, 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 the hell, and then you went out to heaven. Mm. That means you're uh, their jinnah. Yes. The jinnah is the heaven. Mm. So that means you're following those that are ungrateful. Mm. No, you have to be able to maintain. Why, if you're strong while you're in, and then you know, then when you step out there, that's not your jinnah. So don't act like it's a, your jinnah and forget about it. Heaven. The jinnah, the, the paradise, the heaven is, is the next life. And, and if you can be able to live by those restrictions, because for us, we know that we were sent down here. Adam, you know, disobeyed and we were sent down here for a certain amount of time. He did his time. We're doing our time. And if, if we get out, we do well. We get out on good behavior and we get a, a rewarded with the, with the paradise. But if um, we don't while we're doing our time, you know, we'll be sent to the hole. 
you know? And that hole, you don't want to be in that hole, it's pretty hot, you know? <laughs> so, like I said, it's a shame that, you know, in our society, even with that music and stuff, that's why they attack religion so much. Mm -hmm. That's why they attack belief so much. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, they try to make it, you know, silly. You know, but the silly ones are, are those people. If you look at their existence, you look at the results of, you know, what they're doing, you see the destruction. And, you know, you see the increase of of uh, the people in the prisons. You see the increase of, you know, no marriages and stuff because all of these babies and all this stuff, why? Because of what they're calling the people too. So, you know, the guidance is the best guidance. Like I said, follow the example of Jesus. Follow the example of Moses. Follow the example of Muhammad. Peace and blessed be upon all of them. Follow the example of Abraham. And you follow these example of these men, all of this stuff that's happening when they say, oh, they're putting drugs in your community. If they put drugs in your community, you follow the example of Jesus, Muhammad, or uh, 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 Moses, with, with, what would that do? Nothing. Oh, they, they, they're making us have sex and all of that stuff. Okay, well, look, the rule book for Jesus, the rule book for Muhammad, the rule book uh, for Moses that they have, you, you don't do all of that. So if you're following that rule book, you know, then you're going to be successful. Even if you don't believe in that Akira, the, the afterlife, just following the rule book and following those examples of the men, yeah. that's the success. Yeah, and that's what stops us from the success in the, in the District of Columbia. One of the things is, is that gets me is they're, they're making marijuana legal, but they're still doing drug testing. And then now people are failing the drug test. They can't get a job in that situation and stuff. They're, you know, uh, criminal records. There's, okay, there's a lot of opportunity, you know, for people... In, in Baltimore and other places to be police officers and they encourage you not to do this to be able to make the change you got 600 positions for people to come in and all of a sudden good black people decided to just take over the police force 600 people they go in, in Baltimore you can change the whole situation but you gotta have people that have clean records you gotta have people that are, are living righteous lives and they follow an example of the prophets they're good to go so um, we're talking about good to go now it's time for us to go the show is over I appreciate it, and um, peace be with you. Well, God willing, inshallah, we'll see you next week uh, with uh, Cultivating the Culture, and uh, thank you. Thank you, son. <laughs> My man. <laughs>